Welcome along once again to the Star Sports video blog. I'm joined again with Trevor, our anti post correspondent, David, our flat correspondent, and a very special guest, Mr. Bill Esdale, City AM's finest, editor of the racing section there. Um, tread carefully with his tips. As you can notice, we can all afford shirts. Bill can only afford a polo shirt. So if you want to judge his tips on you know, how much money he earns in his clothes, that's probably the best thing you can do. But enough of the wise cracks for me. We'll get straight into it. We're going to talk about the Temple Stakes. How you got Saturday afternoon, five on big group two, top class horses. I'm going to endeavour to find the winner for you at whatever price it is, whether it's a short price favourite or a nice big juicy outsider. But if we start at the top of the market, We've got Soul Power, last year's winner, three to one favourite, second twice at Maidan recently. David, we'll kick off with you. Uh, he's, he's got a great chance on, uh, on all the figures. Uh, the second to the Australian mare, Tenzia at Maidan's extremely strong form. Uh, likes rattling fast ground and this lovely weather we've got. It's going to get quickish at Haydock. It never gets like a road at Haydock, but it'll, it'll, be, it'll be fast ground. I think he's got a great chance, you know, third in the Abbey last year, he's won the number four before, he's got top class um, sprinting form, and uh, I, think he's, I think he's the one to beat, and rightfully the favourite. Trevor? Yeah, it couldn't have been more, the conditions perfect for it, five furlongs, very fast pace as horse needs, and I think tangerine trees should ensure that. Uh, sit off the fast pace and pounce, uh, fair price, I think uh, won the race last year, and can win it again. Well, I'll try in my two penny that you know, I love a trend, I always say that on these videos, and of all the runners in it, only two fit the trends, which is being a five-year-old or younger, third or better last time out, having one over five furlongs, which is very important to me, ticks all the boxes, and for me, it is most likely the winner of three to one, and definitely my selection, but we say the best till last, Mr. William Esdale joining us today. Have you got 33 to 1? No, it's sadly boring, but this, you know, Soul Power won the race last year. We've headlined him in the paper tomorrow. He's, he's the one to beat, it's obvious. Um, he's got arguably the best form in the, the race, Group 1 winner. Um, like David said, ground in his favour. I mean, he's very hard to oppose. I mean, I actually thought when he was a 92 shot at the beginning of the week, he was a really, really good bet. I mean, he's becoming less and less of an attractive proposition now as his price shortens, but he's still definitely the one they've all got to beat. Yeah, I know from an anti post point of view at Star, it's our big it's our big loser. We've laid the nine to two and four. Like you said, you thought it was a big price, clearly everyone else did. We've had to shorten it all the time. I think we're gonna agree we're not a baited breath fan, we're big about that. So unfortunately we are short now about Soul Power. But let's move on to the second phase, the seven to two baited breath, the second coming as it was known a few months ago. Hasn't had a run this year for Roger Charlton. Had uh, various reasons come out for why I didn't run. I thought it was the ground, but who knows? But it can't, it does run. It is seven to two. Trevor will kick off with you. Value at seven to two. I think the poor price. Uh, not to say it's probably not probably the best horse in the race for me. A great, genuine Group One horse, near misses last year, and um, top class prospect. Arguably for me the best uh, British trained sprinter. But five furlongs, quick ground. Not for me. Not first time up. Right, and would it, would it concern you that it's not had a run yet this season? Well, it'd be fresh, I suppose it might light up because it's fresh, but yeah, I think uh, without a run, trip short of its best, I think it's very short. David? I mean, yeah, I think it's an appalling price. Um, it's, it wants six furlongs, it's first time off this season. I mean, saying it's the best British sprinters, no, no accolade. I mean, our sprinters are really poor. Uh, I mean, I think it should be twice the price it is. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Where's well, your national pride, David? Well, uh, you know, when it ran at Hong Kong last year, it got beaten by some, you know, real um, quality sprinters, and they're like 33 to 1, 25 to 1 shots for the big sprints at Ascot. I, I just can't understand how it's second like favourite for this race. Uh, an unsuitable trip against some five foot and real speed balls. Um, first end. So I think we're beginning to you know, work out that we need to be top price in the country about baited breath. Mm. William? Yeah, I mean, the one thing about baited breath is that he's been strutting his stuff all over the world. Um, he's got some great form on the book. Uh, we're shuddering a column for Hayley Turner in the paper tomorrow. She's very keen on it. I think the whole kind of racing industry is keen on this horse. Um, the worries that I have is that five furlongs is not his trip. He's only run once at five furlongs and he was beaten ninth in the Nunthorpe, well beaten last year. All his other runs were over six. 
Um, he'll have aspirations to be running over sixes on the big group one sprints for the rest of the season. I'm not sure this is his target. This is a kind of pipe opener for him. Um, I drew a line through him straight away, and then the only thing that kind of swings me a little bit back towards him is the form of Roger Charlton's yard. They're absolutely flying. I think four of the last six have all gone in. Um, so that always helps to have a yard in form where the horses are flying. Uh, I think this horse will be there or thereabouts. You know, if you could back a horse to finish second, you'll probably back this horse to finish second. He won't be, he won't bomb out, but he'll, he, I don't think he'll win. Right, okay, so we've agreed, we're all against it. We're top price anywhere in the world here at Star Sports, seven to two baited breath, and we fully expect it not to win. Moving on to the third in the betting, Tangerine Trees, six to one, comes here. For Brian Smart, hadn't had a run yet. I'll start with you, David, for you. Uh, yeah, I quite, I quite like Tangerine Trees. I mean, of the front three, of the ones, if I had to back one, it'd probably be him. I mean, he won the Abbey back end of last year. It's got a group one penalty for that, but I mean, it doesn't really put me off too much. Brian Smart, smart sprinters have had a good start to the year. I, I think I'd rather be on him. As, I think there's a bit of eight to one out there of some firms. I'd rather be backing him at eight than, than the other two ahead of him in the market. And that's why we're sixes. Yeah, and you know, it looks it looks like an improving sprinter as well. We won at Beverly in August last year, then went on when won the Abbey. I think I think he's uh, I think he's got a good chance, you know, straight five furlongs on quick ground or, or soon down to the ground and you know of of the front three I'd rather I'd rather be with him than Soul Power Bay draft. Trevor, Tangerine Trees? Uh gotta love the horse really. I think it started winning handicaps of about sixty a couple of years ago. Gone right through the ranks, won a group one in France. For me, the four pound penalty should stop him. Um, I just think it set the race up for the others. Uh, love the horse, but can't see it. And William? Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing too much more to add. I mean, uh, there's a danger that we all say these horses set the race up for others and then they keep on winning. I, I thought Tangerine Trees was a horse that would always set the races up and then he carried on holding on and holding on. Um, the thing that puts me off is the penalty. Um, he. I just would be amazed if he's able to defy the penalty first time up. I couldn't have him myself. Right, okay, so if we all agree he's going to take him along and probably not hold on, is he a good each way bet to hold on for second or third? Me? Anyone? Uh, you? Uh, no, like Dave said, if you can get some 8 to 1, possibly. Um, I just would worry about him falling in a hole on quick ground. Right, okay. Moving on, we'll cover the fourth in, then we can have a little touch on the bigger price ones. But Massimar is the clear fourth in, 10 to 1 with us here at Star Sports. Um, Kevin Ryan's runner, won the Audi Stakes last year. What can you tell us about this one, David? Um, we well, ran in the Abbey as well. Um, the Abbey is always a bit of an odd race, to be fair. It's, it's, like a, it's like a group one for sprint handicappers in a way. But, but the, the winner genu generally goes on. Um, he got beaten four, five laps in that that day. You know, if he's 10 to 1, Tangerine Trees is 8 to 1, I'd rather be back at Tangerine Trees at 8, to be honest. Um, I can't really see why there's more of a price differential between them. He's got some good form though, like his, his second to Deacon Blues is really strong, mm -hmm. and his Audi Stakes win is, is strong, but at the prices, you know, I'd rather be on Tangerine Trees when he's confirmed form in back end last year. They're both running first time out this year. Um, you know, he's, he's, got, he's got a great chance, he's got some great form, but uh, the price is up, there's, there's others I'd rather side with. Doesn't excite you then? No. Trevor? Mm, pretty much agree. Kept improving last year, and it's very quick. There is a danger, him and Tandrew and Cheese will break each other's hearts here, mm. and they really both go at it, and I think Tandrew and Cheese is quicker, uh, so it's hard to see Matthew leading, and it's hard to see him staying on best, so not for me. But, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's, it, it's interesting, the pace of this race, I mean, it's obvious to say that with a you know competitive five level sprint like this, but but you are you're going to have to be able to hold up, lay up with these horses, and they're going to go very very fast. And it's very unlikely, like David said, that you know to tangerine trees. You know he he'll probably win the battle up front, and then you know what happens to Matamor well then? I mean, I just I, I can just see him dropping away. I, I I can't have him at this level. Right then, okay, so. We've touched on the sort of front four or five in the betting. Is there anything at a massive price or anything else in the race that anyone really wants to put up as a, a genuine selection? Um, I quite like Spirit Courts of uh, Robert Carl. Um, he's ran three times in the UK. They bought him from Italy. The, uh, the owner and the, the trainer were talking him up on Twitter quite a lot over the winter. Um, they seem quite sweet on him. He ran a nice race uh, on debut at the All Weather, closing in late. He then went over to Ireland 
well, he ran okay, but nothing special. Then he ran, he ran an eye-catching race at Newmarket, I thought, in the Palace House behind Mason. He was kind of, Mason kind of won down the centre and he was kind of more towards the stand side. A bit of a question mark over the fast ground, but he, I, I think he's improving and, you know, the, the yard seemed quite sweet on him. At 25 to 1, when you've got all these sprinters there, the form kind of ties in with one another. There's no secrets about any of them and the, the prices are about right. I thought he was interesting at 25s. The, the fast ground's a question mark, but you know they're, they're running him on it. They they don't seem to be too concerned. They pulled prohibit out because of the ground, but they're running they're running this one, and I think he's got a good chance. 25s is probably the, the each way bet in the race for me. William, um, it's difficult to see beyond Soul Power, to be honest. Uh, the one horse I know that, that that I keep coming looking at at the biggest price is Bapak Chinta, who. Probably is a five furlong horse, not a six furlong horse. Um, whether he's good enough to mix it with the big boys at the top, I'm not sure. But he could easily run on a nick of place. But uh, I still think Soul Power is the bet. Trevor. Yeah, big Soul Power fan. Uh, I'm not sure Joe actually. Uh, Robert Cowell's other one would be yeah. my idea of each way, but double figure price, it's fit, in form, and I just can't see it running. Well, that's not the first four. We're well, probably four, knowing my luck, but um, do feel that a good race. Right, okay, so in conclusion, um, I'm very much a Soul Howell fan. I think that will be the winner. The horse I like at a big price, 40 to 1 for Mr. Easterby, is a horse com called Confessional. 40 to 1 ticks all the trend boxes, and that would be the one to give me a, a run for my money at a big price. But expect Bated Breath to get beat, and expect Soul Power to be the one to beat him. David, in a word? Uh, yes, Soul Power I think is the most likely winner, but at the prices I, I'm wanting, I'm, I have back spirit courts each way and I'll probably have some more on if he's still 25 on the day. And William? Uh, Soul Power for me, back up to, to chase him home. Okay, well William, thanks for joining us here today. Pleasure. And like I say, anything you want, any markets that we don't have, any specials, anything like that, anything out of the ordinary, please give us a call over Star Sports and we'll do everything we can to find your market and to get you on. But whatever you back at the weekend, all the best of luck.